All right, we've looked at our first type of differential equations, separable. Now it's time to move on to a second type. This is called first order linear differential equations. Now there's one thing I want to get out of the way before we get started. This textbook switches back and forth between using x as its independent variable and t as its independent variable. Depends on which chapter you're in or which section within the chapter as to which one they use as the independent variable. Likewise, I kind of forget which one I'm using from time to time. Sometimes I use x, sometimes I use t. Um, and well, let's just say for the rest of this course, x equals t. All right, we got it. Good, got that out of the way. X equals t. Now, linear. Recall, what is a linear function? Well, a linear function is a function that looks like f of x equals ax plus b, where a and b are constants. Okay. That, with respect to the variable x, it is a just first degree thing. There's, there's no squares, there's no square roots, you're not dividing by x, it's just x to the first power. Okay. Now, likewise, a first order linear differential equation is going to look like this, um, or at least it can be written like this. dy dt is some function of t times y, plus some other function of t. So comparing it to this, it's like the y is playing the role of the x, and the p and g are playing the role of a and b, and the derivative over here is playing the role of the function f. Um, the way I see this is, with respect to y and y prime, this is a linear equation. There is no squares, there's no square roots, there's no divided by's that that it's just a linear combination, well, actually written in this form. So move this over to the other side and don't worry about whether it's positive or negative. Um, we could rewrite it this way, where this is like a linear combination of y and y prime um, equaling something else. There's nothing linear necessarily about p and g, but with respect to y and y prime, you only have them for the first power, and you just have them multiplied by something and then added together. Uh, sometimes these are also written, uh, these equations are also written this way with some function times y prime plus some other function times y equals some other function g over here. And you can perhaps see that this equation right there is pretty much equivalent to this one right here where you would just divide everything by this capital P of t. Now the only reason why I say pretty much equivalent is because there is the possibility that if p of t was equal to zero for some value of t, then that would not necessarily be equivalent to this one because this one would be uh, defined okay with with the p of with that value of t plugged in and having a zero right here. Um, although that would be odd because then you wouldn't have a um, you wouldn't have a differential equation anymore because this part would go away. But well, whatever. Um, We'll have to come back perhaps at some point and look at what's going on when that thing is actually equal to zero. So that being said, these two are essentially equivalent, but it's this form right here that we're going to use to get um, to get solutions. Okay, and what I notice is that this left-hand side, either in this form or in that form, looks a lot like the derivative of a product. Let's go back and take a look at what a derivative of a product looked like. Remember from your calc two days, no, this would be calc one days, calc one, right? That um, the derivative of y times a function, if y is a function of t and f is a function of t, you got a product of a function, two functions, uh, and you use the product rule. So it's f times the derivative of y plus y times the derivative of f. So what I'm seeing is that this result of that derivative of a product with y times some function involves y times one function plus y prime times another function, very much like what that left-hand side right there looks like. Okay. So what I need to do is I need to see if I can create that situation where it is exactly that these two functions, p and q, are exactly f and f prime. Okay. So let's do an example first, see how that works, and then we'll look at the general method of solving. Okay. So here's my, here's my differential equation. I got y prime plus 2 over x times y equals the sine of x squared over x. Okay. Right. Notice that 
This is definitely not a linear function, and the 2 over x is not a linear function. But that's okay. It's the y and the y prime, which are just there to, um, to the first power, right? y and y prime are just there to the first power. So what I'm going to do, um, just because I'm going to... Let's see, how do I say this? Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by x squared. Um, why x squared? Well, because I want to. And I'll, we'll, we'll explain why in a bit. Multiply both sides of this equation by x squared. And look what happens. Okay, So there's a distributive property that happens on the left-hand side here. Uh, so the x squared times y prime, that's right there. And the x squared times the 2 over x times y. One of the x's cancels out, leaving just a 2x times y. And on the right-hand side of the equation, 1x cancels, leaving just this. Okay. Notice what happened to that left-hand side. I was clever, and I multiplied by just the right thing so that the left-hand side is the derivative of x squared times y. Right? If you took the derivative of x squared times y, thinking of y as a function of x, you'd have x squared times the derivative of y, and you'd have y times the derivative of x squared. There it is, x squared times the derivative of y, and y times the derivative of x squared added together. So this left-hand side is the derivative of x squared times y. I'm not, I'm not doing, I'm not taking a derivative, I'm not doing an integral at this point, I'm just replacing the left-hand side with something that it's equal to. So the right-hand side is staying the same. I haven't done, I haven't done anything to either side, I'm just recognizing that left-hand side as being equal to something else and replacing it there. Now, I am going to do something to both sides. I'm going to integrate both sides with respect to x. So this step right here, I just integrated both sides with respect to x. And the crazy thing is, what is the derivative? No, what is the integral of the derivative with respect to sorry, What is the integral with respect to x of the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y? So take the derivative and find the antiderivative. What do you get? Do you get back to what you started with? Yes, mostly you might have a plus c, right? So there's going to be a plus c that appears uh, on both sides of the equation, but then you get the plus c's together. So I integrate this left-hand side. It is just x squared times y, and the right-hand side is whatever it is. I had to do a u substitution with u equal x squared, so du was 2x dx. I only had an x, hence the minus sign. So I end up with a half the integral of sine u, which would be minus a half cos u. It's a constant, so there's that integral there. Solving for y, then, just divide by x squared, and I get this. Notice the plus c is also divided by the x squared. Okay, And I've got that solution now, the general solution of that differential equation. For different values of c, you'll get different solutions. Okay. Um, now, how did I get the x squared? Where did that come from? Well, here we go. Here's how. So we're starting with this equation right here dy dt equals p of t, no, equals dy dt plus p of t times y equals g of t. Notice I'm doing this with a 1 in front of the dy dt. So if there was something else there, I want to divide by it first, and that's going to um, turn it into a 1. Okay, so there's going to be a 1 right here. Now, what I want to do is I want to multiply both sides by some function. I'll call it v of t. This v is what we call the integrating factor. It's going to be the thing that we multiply by, hence it's a factor, right? Factors are multiplied together. So v is the thing we multiply both sides of the equation by in order to be able to integrate them easily, okay? or at least one side easily. I have no guarantees for the right-hand side. It's the left-hand side that I'm interested in. So I'm going to multiply that left-hand side by v of t. There it is right there. And this right-hand side by v of t. There it is right there. So when I use the distributive property, the v of t goes in like this. And what I'm looking at now is something times y prime plus something else times y. So going back up to where was I, this stage right here, the derivative of that product, f times y prime plus f prime times y. Right? So the v is playing the role of the f. Where am I? f times y prime plus f prime times y. So if the v is playing the role of the f, then this thing, v of t times p of t, should be the derivative of f, or hence the derivative of v. Right? So the left-hand side is close to that derivative of the product, and it is exactly the derivative of the product. 
if I can get this thing, v of t times p of t, to equal the derivative of v. Okay? So that's what I want. I need that the derivative of v is this v times p. But this is a separable differential equation. And this is one of the reasons why I do section 2.2 first and then 2.1 second, because I need to know how to solve separable differential equations in order to solve this first order linear differential equation. Okay, so here we go. This is separable. And what I can do is divide both sides by v, multiply both sides by t. And I've got all my v's on the left hand side and all my t's on the right hand side. Woohoo! We can do that. Integrate both sides. Uh, the integral of 1 over v would be natural log of v. Now, notice I'm not worrying too much about like the absolute value in there or the plus c. The plus c would happen once I do this integral. But the thing is, I don't need all of the functions v that would work. I just need one of them. I just need one of them. So I'm probably going to take the plus c to be 0 once I get it. Um, and the absolute value part of it, I don't need to worry about left or right sides necessarily. Anyway, um, integrate both sides. I, I do the same deal with the plus c, and I get rid of the absolute value there, and I pick c equals 1, and whatever. Um, solving for v, I get e to the integral of p of t dt. Notice in our example above, right, the example that we did, where was that? This was the equation right here. The p was 2 over x. <laughs> x is equal to d, right? Yeah, you got this much variable if I use it. Anyway, uh, 2 over x. Um, so it was 2 over x. So when I do e to the integral of 2 over x dx, that is just e to the 2 log x, but e to the 2 log x can be written as e to the log of x squared, which is just x squared, and there's that integrating factor. There's the thing that I multiplied both sides by. Okay. So I didn't just pull it out of a hat. I did this calculation off on the side and didn't tell you about it until now. Okay. Now, plug this back in. So when I plug this back in for v, so what am I plugging it into? I'm plugging it back into this equation right here. So the v is being plugged back in there, there, and there. It's in there three times. Okay. So when I plug this back in, here we go. Uh, there's the v times y prime. There's the v times p times y. And there's the g times v. So I've got to plug back in three times. The left-hand side, although it looks crazy big at this point, we calculated v so that it would be the derivative of y times whatever v is. Right? So this left-hand side is y, the derivative of y times that. So I'm leaving the right-hand side alone because I haven't, I'm not doing anything. I'm not integrating or differentiating or anything. I'm just replacing that left-hand side with something that is equal to. Uh, so the right-hand side is left the same. Now I am going to integrate both sides. I'm going to integrate the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The integral of the derivative of this thing is just this thing. Right? It just stays the same because you take the derivative and the antiderivative and get back to where you were, except maybe a plus c, but we'll take care of the plus c once we do this side. And at this point, we can just solve for y uh, by dividing by this thing. Just, there it goes, divided by that. And I can either write it like that, or sometimes we write it like this, where you're, rather than dividing by e to this thing, you're multiplying by e to the negative of that thing. Um, either way. Right? Now, this looks crazy big for a solution, but that's because I don't know what p is, so I haven't done the integral. I don't know what g is. I, you know, This integrating factor looks like it could be really kind of crazy, but in the example we did, it was just x squared. It's not that big. And we will now do a bunch of um, examples, but in another video.